five new Asaro Perone fragrances. Now, this is gonna be a semi first impression video of these five because I filmed a first impression yesterday. The audio was all messed up, so now I had to redo the video all over again. But luckily, I do have more experience with these fragrances now over the past few hours, so I can tell you guys a little bit more about each one. Now, without further ado, let's just jump right into this again. <laughs> Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video and those were empty boxes, the fragrances are already out of the box so don't worry, no bottles got broken. But yes, I did film this video already yesterday, I really hate to redo a first impression because can't really redo a first impression but, but I still really like these fragrances so far, spoiler alert, so I still want to bring you guys my initial thoughts on them because they're pretty good for the price that you can pick them up for right now. Now the first one we're going to talk about here is Hot Pepper, now this is the purple box purple gradient bottle and one thing I want to say about these bottles first is that they look gorgeous especially up next to each other look absolutely gorgeous love how all of them look this one is the purple one of course the bottle design is similar or the same really as the sorrow pour ohm but with a more modern kind of color gradient to it really really like the color scheme choices for all these bottles extremely good looking now this one has three notes listed on fragrantica we have chili pepper we have pink pepper and we have cashmere now if you guys don't know cashmere it's kind of like a modern woodsy notes as in some of the newer releases nowadays in 2020 like the Rome 2020 and the one EDP Intense both have cashmere in. It's kind of a mass appealing woody note if you guys are not familiar with that that's what it is. This one how does it smell? Now this one smells like a combination of spice bomb and one million. Now this is all based off the few hours that I've had time spending with these fragrances of course. Again I did do a first impression video, botched all that, audio sucks so this is what we have to work with now. This one smells like a combination of spice bomb and one million. So the chili pepper, the pink pepper, just the spices in general, when you smell it you get this nice kind of edgy dark spicy tone that's really reminiscent of how Spice Bomb does its spices. It's dark, it's edgy, it's piercing, it's masculine and it's really mass appealing. So I got all that from Spice Bomb but it also has a sweetness to it like a dark syrupy type of sweetness that you would really associate with 1 million. So the sweetness in here again very dark rich deep kind of sweetness a little bit touch of gourmandishness so you reminded really really much of 1 million. Those two combined creates hot pepper. Now it does not smell like an equal clone like 50% here from Spice Blonde, 50% from 1 million and you smash those together and you get this. It's not exactly like that. What I'm saying is that it has heavy nuances from both of those fragrances put into one bottle and overall smell is great. It is mass appealing. It's a great night out scent so far. Of course, I don't know the longevity or anything like that because I only had like a few hours to test all these out, but this for sure, great night out scent and based off the initial impression, this is one that I would consider wearing myself out to nights out like to bars, to club. And this one being that it's only $26 when I picked it up, it's a killer deal for a scent like this. $26 for something that has the edgy of spice bomb, the sweetness of 1 million, and the smell of the ingredients itself. It's not super low quality as well. It's not super synthetic. It's nowhere near high quality for sure. The spice bomb and 1 million is still far better in ingredients quality than this one. But for $26, you'd be surprised how good and how smooth this thing comes across. It's really, really nice. I really enjoy this one. Is it my favorite though? I'll let you guys know at the end of this video if this one is indeed my favorite or not. But so far, this one is a really nice pickup for $26 for 100 ml. Great pickup. Next, we're gonna talk about Ginger Lover. Now this bottle, Ashton reviewed early on in the week, which I edited that video if you guys don't know. I'm Ashton's secret editor, so all the good effects, you know. It's this guy. But yeah, as I was watching and editing his video, he really liked this one and he had really good things to say about the rest of them that he tried. So that got me to finally pull the trigger on the purchase and just bought all five of them. So thank you, Ashton, for helping me spend 130 some dollars. So thank you so much, sir. So yeah, back to the scent. Ginger Lover has a note of ginger, bergamot, and vetiver. Three notes on Fragrantica. There are more notes in these fragrances, but on Fragrantica, that's all they have listed. So this one, what does it smell like? It smells nice. The ginger in here comes across nice, like well-rounded 
ginger. Not super sharp, not super piercing, quite well-rounded type of ginger. It's just nice. Now the ginger in here, I wanna to touch on really quickly. Let's compare this ginger to Asaro Wanted. Now I'm not saying these two smell the same in any regards. I'm just gonna compare it for you guys since you guys know Asaro Wanted really well, hopefully. Asaro Wanted has this really nice kind of dry, piercing, piercing, piercing strong ginger that when blended with the citrus creates this really nice kind of aromatic really piercing mass appealing feel that's a sour wanted the ginger in here very much a smoother ginger more rounded off less piercing less aggressive than a sour wanted which in my book I like it, but I do enjoy the really dry, aggressive ginger that's in Asara Wanted. If I were to pick between the two, Asara Wanted or Ginger Lover to wear, if I were to go on a night out or if I were to go to a friend's house or something like that, I would go for Asara Wanted realistically. But Asara Wanted is 40 something dollars for 100 ml. This thing again, $26. And for $26, I would say, it is nice. It's mass appealing. The quality of the ingredients is nice for the price. The bergamot in here as well play really nicely to complement the ginger. It's very much a ginger focused fragrance. The citrus is kind of just a supportive note. The vetiver in here don't really smell too much vetiver in the beginning. I would say maybe in a dry down it starts to pop up. Either that or it really helps to tone down or smooth out the rough edges of ginger and bergamot which are inherently more piercing type of notes. The vetiver might be a note that kind of pulls those fragrance back just a little bit. Not quite sure but to me don't get too much vetiver in this one. I get mainly the ginger and the bergamot. I guess the vetiver does maybe kind of give it a little bit of a clean vibe, but not so much. Again, very much focused on the ginger and the bergamot. Very mass appealing for the price. Really, really good pickup. Actually for the price, $26, I find it hard to really think of a better fragrance mass appeal wise than this one. I'll have to really think about it later. But yeah, at that price for this, really enjoy this pickup and it's one that I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy. Anyone can wear this one, also extremely versatile. If this thing performs, it would be a massive, massive killer at the price point. Next one we're gonna talk about here is Amber Fever. Now our notes for this one is Clary Sage, Cacao, and of course, Amber. This one comes across soft clean, soft, has a little bit of a sweetness in the background from the amber. It's nice. It really, really is nice. The cacao in here doesn't smell the most chocolatey. It comes across just sweet, slightly, slightly bit powdery. The clear sage really gives it that kind of translucent, clean kind of touch to it alongside a slight like powderiness from the cacao. The amber in here is not the type of amber that you would smell and you feel instant comfort, instant warmth. So if you guys might not know, there are two main types of amber. One that comes across more sweet, more syrupy and one that comes across more warm and comforting and sometimes it can come across both ways in the same fragrance both sweet and warm at the same time this one not so warm it comes across more sweet more syrupy you're not gonna smell this one and feel like you want to cozy up with this thing maybe a little bit it does have that really nice syrupy sweetness but it's not gonna be your most cozy or warm type of amber that you see in most niche fragrances nowadays yeah, it's more leaning on the syrupy sweet side. Mixing with the cacao though, I would say that they blend well, but the amber definitely takes over the cacao the more the fragrance dries down. The clary sage in here again, really makes this fragrance a little bit more cleaner and it adds a really nice contrast to the overall sweetness of this fragrance, adding a clean kind of office vibe to a scent that is this sweet surprisingly works extremely well. And this is one that I would say one of my favorites already. I'm just gonna spoil it for you guys right now. If you guys watch this far into this video, this is one of my favorites ever from this line so far, Amber Fever. It's one that I haven't tested out on skin yet. This is the only one that I have not tested out on skin, but it is really good so far. And this one, honestly, based off first impression, I would pay upwards of like 35 and at most just under 40 or maybe just $40 for this one. So yeah. For the price, again, like all these fragrances right here, really, really nice pickup. Glad I picked this one up. And this is one that I wanna test out more this coming fall, and it's one that I definitely want to review on this channel later. So yeah, stay tuned for this one. Actually, I'm gonna be reviewing all five of these eventually on this channel, so stay tuned for those. But this one definitely is one of my favorites so far from the lineup. Next one here we're gonna talk about Naughty Leather, which is the best name a fragrance can ever have, Asaro. 
what were you thinking? <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I hate saying this name. I remember doing a first impression of this one and I really hate every time I say Naughty Leather. It just sounds so weird. Now the notes for this one, we have Artemisia, Vanilla, and Leather. Now Artemisia, never smelled Artemisia before in my life, so I'm not gonna pretend that I know what that adds to this fragrance, but Vanilla and Leather are notes that I'm very familiar with. So this one, right off the bat, you're gonna notice one thing. The leather is supportive. It's very much in the background in comparison to the vanilla. The vanilla really takes over in this one. It's sweet, it's slightly a bit dark, but the leather in here really doesn't remind you of true leather. It doesn't remind you of brown leather or black leather or white leather. It doesn't have that rough quality about it. It just has a little bit of a dark kind of brownish leather kind of feeling. Nothing rough, like I said, nothing authentic, like I said. It's just, it's really dark kind of brownish type of note and it's very familiar. You smell this, you'll be reminded of this one fragrance right here. You'll be reminded straight up of CH Man Prevade, at least with the leather. How the leather works in Naughty Leather versus how it works in CH Man Prive, they're near identical. The leather in CH Man Prive is also not super leathery. It's not super brown, rough, dark leather. It's also in the same vein as Naughty Leather as in it just adds a darker element to the fragrance. Now CH Man Prive of course has a boozy type of sweetness and a spicy cardamom type of sweetness. So it's a very different type of sweetness than what you get here, which is more vanilla in nature. Now, if I were to pick between these two fragrances though, this one versus Siege Man Privé because these are used in exactly the same situation, clubs, nights out, and dates. So between these two, if Naughty Leather performs, I much prefer Naughty Leather. Simply because the vanilla in here smells extremely nice. Something about vanilla to me just smells more romantic, just smells sexier, more alluring than something like Siege Man Privé, especially for the date. Now, a caveat to this is that if you're going on a nights out, clubbing to the bar, I would say lean more towards Siege Man Privé. But if you're wearing this one out on a date or wearing this one in general as a signature scent, I much prefer Naughty Leather. So that's saying a lot. Siege Man Privé is a 40 something dollar fragrance, $50 fragrance for 100 ml. This is again 26, so half the price of CH Man Privé used in the same situation. And for me, from my personal opinion so far, without knowing the performance of this one, I prefer this over CH Man Privé. Last one in here, we have Wild Mint. And I saved this one for last because this is the only fragrance I've been able to wear fully. So right after the first impression yesterday, I sprayed three sprays of this on, wore it, and oh my god, it like surprised the living crap out of me. Because when I sprayed on paper the first time on first impression, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. But when I sprayed it on skin, I was like, this is fantastic. This is absolutely Fantastic. Now the notes for this one before I jump too much into hyping this one out, it has mint, patchouli, and calypsone. And calypsone is a synthetic molecule made by Jividen, one of the fragrance compounding company. And it's supposed to smell ozonic, airy ozonic, with a touch of sweet melon. So that's exactly what you get in here, by the way. So in the opening of this one, you're gonna get a really nice blast of mint. The mint is so piercing but smooth at the same time you get a rich rich mint like you have a bunch of mint leaves you crush it in your hand and you smell it that's how rich the mint comes across sadly though does not last the mint in here really fades away too quickly you still get a little bit of a cooling residual from the mint later on in the mid and the dry down but overall it does disappear quite quickly. Now the patchouli in here, not at all an earthy patchouli. It adds a little bit of a darkness, a little bit of a greenness, but it's not at all a super earthy type of patchouli that to me sometimes I find unwearable. This one is a really nice patchouli that just adds a darkness onto this fragrance. Now the star of this fragrance heading into the mid and the dry down is gonna be the ozonic note, the calypsone. This one has a really nice kind of airy, masculine feel about it with a light touch of that sweet melon to really just complete the package. It has a little bit of that cooling element that's left over from the mint mixed with a really nice, mass appealing ozonic vibe and the sweet melon. Smells really, really good. And for the first 30 minutes, it's gonna overwhelm you because all these notes are just gonna hit you all at once and that's what it did to me. I did three sprays, three sprays only, one on each side of my neck and one behind my neck. And as I was sitting there editing a video, I was just overwhelmed. It was strong for the first like 30, 40 minutes. So hopefully that bodes well for the longevity of this fragrance. I didn't test it out fully because I fell asleep a little bit after that. So I really did not get the full longevity information on this fragrance yet, but 
overall, man, I was thoroughly impressed by Wild Men. For $26 again, killer, 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 killer. Wild Men amongst my top two favorite from this lineup so far. My other favorite being Amber Fever, as you guys may already know. So this is number one. This so far is number two. The number three spot, I would say I'm gonna give it to Ginger Lover because this one does have a similarity to a lot of designer fragrances out there, but it does ginger in quite a different way that I appreciate. So it has a little bit of that uniqueness in this one. Hence why this one is that number three. Really enjoy this one. Now the number four and five is a toss up really between Hot Pepper and Naughty Leather. These two has the most similarities to fragrances that I already own. Hence why they're at the bottom of the list simply because I'm just reminded of stuff I already own. If I already own those fragrances, chances are I'll rarely ever put these on. Except for Naughty Leather, if this one performs, I'll put it on more than CH Man Privé. But for Hot Pepper, I already own Spice Bomb. I own Halloween Man, which is like a version of 1 million. Chances for me to wear this one, extremely low, to be honest with you. I might not wear this a lot at all. I will wear it to do a proper review of it, but I'm not gonna wear it too often because most of the time, I'll just reach for Spice Bomb if I want something spicy or I'll just reach for Halloween Man if I want that syrupy touch. Rarely do I want both of those qualities in one fragrance. So yeah, actually, this one is the fifth, my least favorite from the line, this one is the fourth. Now, I'm not saying these two are bad fragrances, it's just those three that I just talked about are better than this one. Again, for $26, all of these fragrances are really, really nice pickup, even Hot Pepper, even though this is my least favorite. At $26, this is still an easy, easy gem to grab. But yeah, just to recap again, these two are not bad fragrances, the other three are just better. All of them are great at $26 for 100 ml. All extremely nice pickups in their own right. All right, guys, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you tried any of these five fragrances, let me know down in the comment section below which one is your favorite. I picked these up from Fragrance X, not a sponsored video. I picked all these up from Fragrance X if you guys want to go and purchase those for yourself. And with that being said, I'll see you guys again in the next video. Peace out and bye.